Hi, good day. And this morning we are going to start with uh, the parable of the mustard seed. And uh, before we start, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for speaking to us in ways that we can understand and uh, make us even think more, especially through parables. And this uh, day, Lord, I pray that you will speak to us clearly from this particular parable, uh, the parable of the mustard seed. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, Pastor Tom and uh, Pastor Eden has uh, been taking you all through uh, the studies and the parables. And uh, chapter 13 uh, of the book of Matthew has, I, I call it the chapter of parables. It's full of uh, various kinds of parables. And today, uh, I'm going to uh, look at one particular parable, just as, I, as, just as I've said, the parable of the master seat. But why does Jesus always speak in parables? What is the reason? Yeah? And the verses uh, after the parable of the master seat explains why Jesus speaks through parables. It is uh, Matthew chapter 13, verse 34 and 35. Let me just read it for you and it explains clearly. All these things Jesus spoke to the multitude in parables and without a parable, he did not speak to them. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet saying, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things kept secret from the foundation of the world. So dear friends, there's your explanation. Because it was prophesied that he will open his mouth with parables, that's one of the key reasons why Jesus speaks through parables. So today's parable, the mustard seed, let's look at what God is trying to teach us regarding kingdom. Now the chapter 13 is all about kingdom of God. And he's explaining about the kingdom of God through parables and he's explaining how God's kingdom will look like okay this is uh, taken from Matthew chapter 13 verse 31 to 32 okay 31 to 32 another parable he put forth to them saying the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed which a man took and sowed in his field which indeed is the least of all the seeds but when it when it is grown it is greater than the herbs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and nest in its branches very simple parable but packed with a lot of truth uh, in total there are five different things that i have discovered from these two verses and let me give you all them all of them first of all the kingdom of God starts small, okay? When he says, like a mustard seed, which is the smallest among the uh, seeds of herbs. Uh, so the kingdom of God uh, starts small. So let's, don't, uh, let's not despise small beginnings or humble beginnings. You know, today, many of us are only interested in things that are noticeable, ministries that are noticeable, work of God that are noticeable, recognizable, famous, but not the small unnoticeable ones. How many of you actually pay attention, look for things that are really small? How many of you, uh, you know, go into YouTube, listen to pastors from very small churches? We always go to look out for those big famous ones and we hear the famous ones because what we like today is big but from this parable God shows very clearly the kingdom of God starts really small so you're going to be really disappointed if you're only looking for big things it's our nature our human nature and the way uh, we are designed we always love to have everything big big portion big slice big gifts big appreciation great accomplishments huge success and great acknowledgements but we can't deny the fact that all big and great things come from small things 
So let me take uh, a few uh, instances and uh, show you how these small things actually work in a big way. For instance, nails. Nails put the house together. Stamps take a letter all the way across from one nation to another nation. Uh, rubber bands can hold many things together. Paper clips can keep things in order. Spark plugs are small, but without them, the engine in your car won't run and you won't be able to get around anywhere. Microchips are usually smaller than a thumbnail, but keeps your computer running and hold billions of bits of information. A drop can make big ripples. Tiny seeds can grow into mighty trees. So dear friends, is God asking you to do something small? Remember this parable whenever God is asking you to do something small. Because everything starts with a humble beginning, a small beginning. Even you and I started as a tiny t dot in our mother's womb. And uh, let me show you another verse in the scripture that talks about this. In Zechariah 4.9, it says, For who has despised the day of small things? Who has despised the day of small things? It's very important, dear friends, that we do not despise the small beginnings, the humble beginnings. The second lesson that I learned from this particular parable is this. The kingdom of God is planted by God. It's not an accident. Okay? It's not like a seed that flies through the wind and drops behind your garden and it grows. So, it has to be intentional. If we have the attitude that God's kingdom will grow by itself, oh, God is so mighty, God is so great, He can make it happen, He doesn't really need me. I go on living my life the way I like, you know, it's fine. If that is our attitude, then we need to realize that uh, in, this in this particular passage, it shows clearly someone needs to sow it. Someone needs to plant it. It shows that this man, man sowed it in his garden. He planted it in his garden. And that man refers to God and you and me. Okay, The people that God has selected uh, to plant his seed. So, kingdom of God doesn't happen accidentally, but intentionally. Okay? It doesn't come, happen accidentally, but intentionally. So, what are we go, go, uh, doing intentionally to see His kingdom come and His will be done where we are? You know, we say this prayer every Sunday after service. Some of you may even recite it every day before you sleep. And the Lord's Prayer says this very clearly. Your kingdom come and your will be done. As it is in heaven. Friends, that's what we are saying. Do we really mean what we say? And so, if we are saying that, if that is a prayer and it's not intentionally brought into actions, nothing is going to grow. We got to intentionally take the seed and plant it. The Lord is asking you and I to plant seeds of the kingdom wherever we are so that His kingdom will come. Third thing that I learned is this. The kingdom of God is the least of all others, so-called great kingdoms. <laughs> okay? So He says, the mustard seed is the least, the smallest compared to other seeds. You know, sometimes Christianity looks really, you know, uh, uh, you know, the kingdom of God may look really small, powerless, and insignificant in the beginning. Especially people when they do missions. You know, missionaries, when they go and do things, it is so insignificant. Do you know that Dr. David Livingston 
spent his entire life in Africa. And when he was dying, and he was in a, uh, when he was in his deathbed, there was only one believer, and that guy wasn't even strong in his faith. Today, the land that David Livingston walked around, Tanzania, Kenya, and all of East Africa, okay, uh, is today uh, large Christian populations there. Why? Because this man believed in sowing that mustard seed. Small it may be, but it has grown today. It has grown today. It may look powerless at that time, but today it's powerful. Okay? Don't let your heart be dismayed when things are small. Don't get discouraged. Friends, I want to tell this to you. Don't get discouraged when things look really small. Don't give up on those small things that God is asking you to do for His kingdom. Okay? So, the kingdom of God is the least of all other so-called great kingdoms. Fourth, the kingdom of God, when it grows, it outgrows others. Okay, when it starts growing, it outgrows all others. It outgrows that of its kind, all the herb. It says uh, the, the mustard seed outgrows all the other herbs and becomes a tree. It's not a plant, but it becomes a tree. So what you and I, God has asked us to do, what has God called us to do, it may look small and we may only see it small in our lifetime. But after our lifetime, it will become a great, great tree when it's called by God. When it's called by God. When you and I are called by God to do the kingdom of God. When it's actually planting the kingdom of God, not our own kingdoms. Huh? Don't get me wrong. <laughs> it's when we plant what God has called us to do. Our, not our kingdoms, but God's kingdoms. When we plant God's kingdom, it will grow. Just like David Livingston's work, just like William Carey's work, just like Hudson Taylor's work, just like Adoniah Judson's work. And all these guys, who went to extend the kingdom of God started small with small mustard seeds but it outgrew it outgrew and finally in closing the kingdom of God becomes a home for many it says very clearly when it's grown into a tree the birds will come and make its nest they don't come and rest they make their nest that's why I say the kingdom of God becomes a home for many it is not for just, you know, the tree is not just to look nice. It's not a bonsai plant. <laughs> Looks nice. You can put it for decoration. You can't have nests in a bonsai plant. Okay, I I'm talking about the small ones in, that you put inside your house. You can't have a bird's nest. But when it grows into a tree, it can become a nest for even eagles. It can become a nest for even eagles. So my dear friends, that which you are starting, that God has called you to start, will become a home for many. I pray that this morning's uh, uh, or this whole day's devotion will be a great encouragement for every one of you. Don't despise the humble beginnings. Don't uh, be ashamed of the small beginnings. Work hard at it, and truly, if it is God's uh, uh, will, it will grow.
Jesus more and more. See one more time. Here I am waiting. Here I am waiting. Abide in me, I pray. Here I am, longing for you. And bring me to my knees. May I know Jesus more and more. So come if you may. Father, I pray for every single person that's watching this. I pray this morning's or this day's devotion will be a great encouragement to everyone. Lord, if they are discouraged and looking at what they're doing seems to be so small, Lord, will it ever be in, uh, significant? Maybe these are the thoughts that's running through their mind. I pray right now, this parable will eliminate all these thoughts right now in Jesus' name. And they will begin to realize that whatever God starts, it starts small, but it will grow into something really huge and big. And so let them be encouraged. I don't know who is this this morning that is discouraged, that you seem to see, oh God, nothing is happening, it's so small. God is telling you, listen to my parable. Listen to my words. May His words bring faith in your heart. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, church.